Now that we're coming up on the final shape and the end of this era of the game, I think it's a good time to look back and reflect on some of the more notable events from the past 10 years. One such topic came up on Reddit recently, which was relayed to me by a couple of viewers, and by a couple of viewers, I mean myself, and it's a classic question that's been asked many times throughout the years, but one that I've never actually discussed on the channel, and that is, what was the strongest weapon loadout in the history of the game? While there are arguments to be made for many loadouts, I'm sure, two tend to stand above the rest whenever this question is asked. Fatebringer, Blackhammer, and Gallarhorn from Destiny 1, and Mountaintop, Recluse, and Anarchy from Destiny 2. If these are not the best loadouts that the game has ever seen, then they're certainly near the top, but these two pretty much come up every single time. But that begs the question, which of the two was better in their respective eras? Let's take a look at Destiny 1 first, Fatebringer, Blackhammer, and Gallarhorn. Fatebringer back then is more or less the Fatebringer that you know today. It had Firefly for the crazy explosions, it had Outlaw for the fast reloads, but it also dealt arc damage. Now, raid weapons were elemental primary weapons, which today are completely normal, but back then were massive game changers because of end game modifiers, specifically burn or surge based modifiers. They weren't the 25% buff that we know today. No, no. Back in Destiny 1, these damage boosts were several hundred percent, which meant that if you had an elemental primary weapon, you could trivialize end game content that had these modifiers. However, these modifiers also affected incoming damage. So being able to just instigib every enemy was not only good, but it also stopped you from being killed faster than you can be killed in current day Grandmaster content. These weapons were so good that they were left behind in the transition from year one to year two. And when they did come back in year three during the April update, they were made into exotics so that they could not be combined into a loadout with another exotic. Black Hammer was from Crota's End, a legendary sniper rifle that you probably know as the exotic Whisper of the Worm today. Black Hammer in its original form could go infinite, White Nail Prox would restore three shots to the magazine from thin air. It wasn't just from reserves, at least when it first launched. This, in combination with Icebreaker, a sniper that could slowly regenerate ammo for free, introduced a meta in endgame content where you could simply stand so far away from enemies that they would not be able to hit you while scoring infinite amounts of damage. It also had Mulligan to bail you out of missed shots on occasion. Black Hammer was eventually retired and re-released as Black Spindle as a part of a secret exotic mission on the moon, but with White Nail pulling ammo from reserves, not from thin air. You might have noticed that I said exotic as well. It was turned into an exotic, much like its iteration in Destiny 2 as Whisper of the Worm, although Whisper of the Worm also went through a couple of iterations before landing in its current form. Gallarhorn pretty much needs no introduction as it was a behemoth well before it ever made its way to Destiny 2. Initially written off when first sold by Xur in week two of the franchise for being an exotic heavy, like why am I using an exotic heavy? I'm barely using it. The community very quickly realized over the first couple of months of the game that G-Horn did insane amounts of damage, cooking pretty much every boss in the game if it was appropriate to use a rocket against them. Again, when combined with solar damage modifiers in endgame content, this could very quickly dispose of anything in its path. Destiny 1 was considerably slower paced than the insanity that we know today, at least in PvE world. But it also had a lot of these crazy high percentage modifiers that allowed some of these weapons to do absolutely crazy things. When we disregard the modifiers, we're still left with three weapons that eventually all became exotics within Destiny 1 itself, or already were exotics in the case of Gjallarhorn. This is one of the main arguments for the fact that this loadout is the strongest loadout that we have ever had in PvE. While none of these weapons did absolutely insane, unheard of things, each weapon itself was just really strong and really good at what they did for a wide range of PvE activities. For PvP purposes though, this setup is nothing that special at all, and that'll be potentially important later. Destiny 2 
has had many strong loadouts. I actually think that Quicksilver Storm, Forbearance, and Commemoration is one of the strongest, most consistent that we've had in recent memory. I certainly think it deserves a top slot across the entire franchise, but Mountaintop, Recluse, and Anarchy wreaked havoc on the game in a way that we have never seen before, and we will probably never see again. There may be some recency bias in this analysis, just as a heads up, but it was really that good. Mountaintop and Recluse were both from the same drop system, hitting 2,100 points in competitive PvP during seasons five and six, respectively. They were meant to be rewards for high-level players achieving a somewhat high rank, although many would argue that 2,100, when 5,500 is the highest, isn't exactly the pinnacle of PvP gameplay. While Mountaintop took a little bit longer to catch on, Recluse was an immediate PvP and PvE powerhouse, with Mountaintop eventually to follow as an overwhelmingly dominant choice. Recluse was the ultimate in weapon technology because of Master at Arms, its main perk. This perk could be activated by getting a kill with any weapon, and it could refresh itself. It sounds strong, until you learn that the damage boost was 50%, which is higher than pretty much every other damage buff that we've ever seen in the game. Feeding Frenzy isn't the strongest perk in the world, but considering the rate at which you could kill things, it was likely stacked very high at all times. This made it the best primary weapon in the game by considerable margins in most, if not all, pieces of content. Not only that, but it was a PvP beast as well, being a stronger kill clip perk that can activate on any weapon kill. Mountaintop was also both a dominant PvP and PvE choice because it was a grenade launcher that could shoot grenades in a straight line, removing any need to account for the arc of a grenade launcher shot. This allowed for much more aggressive use in a time where special ammo wasn't nearly as limited as it is today, at least in PvP. But in PvE, it also worked for nearly every situation. Its regular damage on bigger targets was really strong, it was easy to use because of the lack of arc, and it could be auto-reloaded through other effects, like Lunafaction Boots or the Titan Rally Barricade. This weapon was insanely powerful during the auto-reload PvE meta in combination with the final weapon in this loadout. Anarchy took a little while to catch on, but once we saw its power, we never looked back. Anarchy had so much total ammo and dealt so much damage over time that when combined with the auto-loaded mountaintop, not only dealt crazy amounts of damage, it took very little skill to actually use this loadout. We've seen this happen in Destiny at least a couple of times, where the best strategy is also one of the easiest to use, and this was probably the most brain-dead of the strategies, requiring very little work against bosses that tended to not really threaten the player during a damage phase in raid content. Anarchy was efficient, but also had huge reserves, so if you wanted to be inefficient, you could be, and more or less allowed you to be in two places at once. Only when Bungie nerfed the damage and reserves did this weapon come back to reality, but it took a while for that to happen. Arguments could be made for Mountaintop and Recluse, in addition to Not Forgotten, a dominant PvP weapon acquired by hitting 5500 in the ranking system, as being the catalysts for why Bungie was going to sunset weapons in Destiny 2. These weapons were so powerful that if left unchecked, would simply be the only options going forward unless Bungie made something even stronger than these two weapons, which would be incredibly unhealthy for the game. Bungie eventually ditched the Sunset concept, but still ended up retiring weapons that came out before Season of the Seraph, aka Season 10, which included Mountaintop and Recluse. While the Destiny 1 loadout did eventually become the equivalent of a three exotic weapon loadout in one, you could also argue that this Destiny 2 loadout was of similar quality. It might as well have been three exotic weapons. Mountaintop and Recluse could both absolutely be considered exotic tier were they ever to return in the game in a non-sunset state. I think it could be argued that a lot of Mountaintop and Anarchy's strength as a raid DPS strategy relied on external factors like auto reload effects, whereas the Destiny 1 loadout did not rely on those same factors, although both had access to damage buffs like Ward of Dawn and in Destiny 2's case, mostly Well of Radiance. However, 
even in non-raid settings, this Destiny 2 loadout was still absolutely dominant, as was Destiny 1's best loadout. Does something like that matter in a ranking? Destiny 1 didn't have the same craziness as Destiny 2 does, but should that be held against Destiny 2? We were just using what was available in the game at the time. Things did eventually get so bad, though, that part of a video I made a few years ago discussed the auto-reload one-phasing raid bosses meta that had come to pass, which made almost every aspect of the PvE world a complete stomp if you had these things. Granted, two weapons from the Destiny 2 loadout came from competitive PvP, and the other was a raid exotic, so getting these things wasn't exactly the same as getting a world drop and getting lucky. But... Destiny 1's loadout also consisted of two raid weapons, so arguably as tough to get for some people. For the people who did have them, though, it trivialized the game in a way that is still probably more trivialized than the game is today. Another point going to Destiny 2's loadout, potentially, is two of the three weapons here were also busted PvP weapons for their duration, whereas the Destiny 1 loadout wasn't that special in PvP. Sure, Fatebringer was a good hand cannon, but it wasn't the force that Recluse nor Mountaintop were. It just depends on if you're including PvP as a factor in this competition, because if you are, I think the win absolutely has to go to Destiny 2, but if you're not, then maybe things are a little more even. Personally, I'm going with Destiny 2's Mountaintop, Recluse, and Anarchy setup. This meta lasted longer than Destiny 1's setup, as Fatebringer and Black Hammer were both retired for Taken King and came back in exotic forms down the road. Destiny 2's loadout was part of the catalyst of the auto-reload PvE meta getting absolutely nuked, of which it never returned. Recluse remains my top used weapon in terms of total kills, with only my Go Figure Pulse Rifle from the Forsaken era even getting close. Also, these weapons were busted, Recluse in particular. We've never seen a perk as strong or as easy to use in the game, and we probably never will again, and the same goes for Mountaintop. White Nail on Black Hammer is a great perk. You still needed to hit some shots to make it work, though, and Fatebringer itself was really never a super busted weapon in its own right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Destiny 2's loadout. Again, some recency bias might be showing, but I think the Destiny 2 loadout has too many points in its favor to not be considered the most dominant loadout the game has ever seen. If you think I'm wrong, you're, I mean, vote in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.